Hello and welcome to SMA Talks, a monthly series where Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston discusses important topics that directly impact the day-to-day -day business of the U.S. Army. This month, our topic is This Is My Squad. This Is My Squad is an initiative to build a stronger, more cohesive bond between soldiers and their unit so that they know one another, look out for each other, and work better as a team. We also have a special guest, Sergeant Major Thomas Payne, a Medal of Honor recipient who helped rescue 70 hostages held by ISIS during Operation Inherent Resolve. SMA and Sergeant Major Payne, thank you both for being here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. And uh, special guest, Medal of Honor recipient, Sergeant Major Payne, thanks for being here. I really appreciate your service. And SMA, what is This Is My Squad? Well, this is something we've really been talking about for a little over a year now, and I'm, I'm still really passionate about it, and I'm really excited about it. When I frame this, is a couple of things. Like right in the middle, I would say we focus on leadership. But some people only heard that we're talking about an infantry squad leader. So it's not about an infantry squad leader. This is about small unit leadership, and that could be, you know, a uh, small unit leader, whether you're a Department of the Army civilian, you're a National Guard soldier, a United States Army Reserve, or an active duty soldier, and it's not necessarily a squad, uh, a rifle squad. This is about small unit leadership, how we treat each other and how we act within the squad, how we build cohesive teams that are fit, disciplined, and well-trained, and that's what it means to be in my squad. And Sergeant Major Payne, the 75th Ranger Regiment is an example of how effective team cohesion can be. What were some of the things you noticed when you joined the 75th Ranger Regiment? You know, looking back at my time in the 75th Ranger Regiment, it's the United States military's premier large-scale special operations force made up of some of the most elite soldiers in the United States military. And I look back at my first squad leader and the impact that he had on my career. I originally went to ACO, 1st Platoon, Weapon Squad, my, uh, my first squad leader was a Silver Star recipient from the Battle of Takagar. He also had two Medal of Honor recipients from that battle. And how important, you know, the squad leaders were in that platoon, the team leaders. You know, they brought me in, they prepared me, you know, for combat. And they brought me up for, as a, you know, as a young man. And, you know, there's some things that your father can teach you about being a man, then you join the regiment and they, you know, they took you to a different level. And they, um, you know, the importance of um, that team room atmosphere, that squad area, it's a place where, you know, I, I felt comfortable and it's um, you look back at, you know, there's some times where we had some difficult conversations. You know, you're part of each other's lives and um, not only in the back end at, at your home life, but also on the battlefield. And they're for, there for you both on the battlefield and off the battlefield. And uh, Sergeant Major Payne, uh, that initial impression that a soldier gets when they get to a new unit, I know you joined 75th Ranger Regiment, but uh, what can leaders do to help their soldiers have a better first impression? Because it, it really sets them up for how they're going to be in that unit. It is bring them in, bring them into that squad area. They're now part of your family. You know, your first squad that, you know, that is your family coming, you know, joining the military. And um, it was a great family atmosphere joining the regiment. And looking back at it, you know, they, they brought the best of me. You think about inspiration. You know, the inspiration starts from all the way from the top, all the way down to that basic ranger private. And um, I had the opportunity to engage with some of the graduating RAS class. It's the ranger assessment and selection program. You know, an opportunity to earn your scroll and your tambourine. And I was inspired by those, you know, those young men, that, well, rangers that are now in our formation. It's great. Yeah, and I think for those lessons learned right there, you can hear that. And what the, the whole army needs to learn, how do, where does that begin? You know, how do I receive somebody in my unit? It may start before they leave. It's about being a good sponsor. But if you listen to what Sergeant Major Payne says, from the first second, you're part of an organization. That starts when you leave your old organization or at least starts when you're going from AIT. And then how do you re bring people into your organization is so important. We may not all have a Medal of Honor recipient or a Silver Star, but do we have our best foot forward? Did we put our most dedicated NCOs at that reception unit? Did I do everything that makes sure that that person is set up to be a part of a great cohesive team from the first day they step on the post? 
And I still remember a young soldier as I was, I'm, I'm driving to Fort Campbell and we talk about berets and those things they give you that just makes you feel part of your unit. And I still remember I'm driving to Fort Campbell and I go, you know, I'm going to be in the 101st. And I get to wear that patch. And it was so important that I got to wear that patch. So how do you bring them in? How do you issue the beret? How do you issue them a patch? How do you sponsor them in? How do you bring their families in? Is that part of a small cohesive team? And some units do it really well. And I think we all need to do a little bit better with that. Thank you, SMA. And the next question I have for both of you, but we'll start off with Sergeant Major Payne. And what are some of the attributes of an effective unit that you've seen? It's that commitment to far exceed the standard. You know, not just meet the Army standard, but far exceed it. And then also that commitment to one another to inspire each other to bring out the best in one another. Yeah, it's also about ownership, you know, being a part of a team. Um, it's, it's such a... I really like the ownership part is because if I walk up to my house, you know, I want it to be clean and neat. If it's, you know, my daughter or if it's my soldier, I'm committed to that. Or if the soldier says, that's my sergeant, that's what it means. And it goes, it's not, you know, top to bottom, it's bottom to top is where we have that ownership. They're mission focused. They have, you know, a great mindset. And I think that's part of it. It's not somebody else's squad. It's my squad. And I think that's really important. That. And this question is for both of you. And we'll start off with you again, Sergeant Major Payne. But how can leaders help uh, implement these changes into their unit? Well, be the best version of yourself. Always strive to, like I said before, far exceed the standard. You know, look, you know, do some self-awareness and see where you, where you stand in the, in, as an individual and try to be the best leader that you can be to, for your soldiers. Yeah, I think sometimes when we talk about, you know, my squad and how do I get to know them and you know, I build fit, discipline, uh, cohesive teams, sometimes we say, well, I'm doing that. You know, how can I implement this thing? Well, this is not new. In some organizations, it's actually not new. But I'll give you an example of how I think we're, we may be missing the mark a little bit. I was, I was out and I, I was in a small squad area and there was a squad leader there. And I asked him, I said, well, have you called the family? And the NCO goes, absolutely not. I was like, man, why, why absolutely not? I said, well, this is important. Is, well, I, I wouldn't do that. I said, well, in my squad, in my team, I know my teammates. And we shouldn't have the attitude that we wouldn't call the family. It should be the exact opposite. Of course, they're in my squad. It's my family. And, you know, I got to know all parts of that family. So just implementing, how do I implement it? It's number one, you believe in ownership. Um, you go out and you say, I am going to take, you know, ownership of those that are, that are in, both good and the bad. And I'm going to be a great example for them. So I'm going to show, you know, set the example, but I'm also going to be maybe a little intrusive to saying, hey, I'm going to dig a little deeper because when you're part of a family and you have that commitment, you know, the Army and the military service is, is being part of something bigger than yourself. And that's a commitment. And I think to implement this means you get to really know your soldiers on a new level on something that we, I just think we haven't done in a while. So, Sergeant Major Payne and SMA, what does being the leader of a small unit team in combat actually look like? Well, you know, in combat and garrison, you try to bring out the best in one another, both in combat and in garrison. And it, and it starts, to, you know, in garrison and training. You know, you try to have the most realistic training possible. And like I said before, you want to try to foster that environment where you can try to far exceed the standard, not just meet the standard, but far exceed it. Well, I, I could say I'm alive today because of, you know, people in my squad, now, people that looked out for me. Again, this is not about an infantry squad leader. Sometimes even as a, you know, a battalion sergeant major, you know, you've got a small squad. You've got the battalion commander, you've got a driver, you got a dismount that you're going to be with in combat. And I can promise you, if it wasn't for that small unit leaders looking out for me, Hey, don't go there. Don't go over that way. Uh, or don't step on that or move back this way. It's about, you know, that's the ownership that we want to get at. You would never, 
you know, let somebody step on a landmine. Oh, wait, I think that's an IED. Let's go back here. And I think that's what it means to be in my squad. We would always look out for you no matter what. And that's the combat version. But how do we take that back? It's the same thing. It's those around you that are constantly looking out for you that they would, would do anything for you either on or off duty. If, if I'm in need, I wouldn't, my squad wouldn't just pick up the phone. They knew where I live. They would come get me. Um, they wouldn't send me a text. They would drive to my house and say, I think this person is either going through a good time or a bad time. So that's the same thing we would do in combat. And it's the same thing that we want all our small unit leaders to do is that, that really that ownership where we wouldn't let anybody down, good or bad. And also the, when you come home on the backside of that, you know, there's times that, you know, combat can be tough for both the soldier and, and the family. You know, you're going to go through some fundamental life-changing events in combat. And for me, there are times that, you know, I've had to look back at my career is like, hey, I'm not, now I'm not afraid to go to the chaplain. I'm not afraid to you know, to go to the sites. It's the same as going to the gym for me. You know, the Special Operations Command, we, we have what we call the uh, POTA program, Preservation of the Force and Families. You know, you have to use the, all domains. And now that, you know, I'm a senior NCO, now, you know, tell my guys like, hey guys, guess what? I'm gonna go see the chaplain. You know, we, we went through some, a tough deployment. You know, it, you have to be okay with that. Yeah, and I think you're comfortable doing that if you, and saying that because you have a cohesive team. If I'm part of a unit that has trust, you trust me when, when I have to go do those things. You trust that I could tell you that. And you're not afraid to tell anybody because that's your teammate. That's your family. And if they're going through, if they had a tough deployment and they need to go talk to somebody, you go, oh, yeah, I'll go with you. Maybe yeah. I need to talk to you. <laughs> hey, let, come on, let's go. I probably need to talk to the chaplain the same thing. You know, so... It's, there's no judgment. It's just, you know, how we do it. And, you know, being part of my squad means we'd probably either go do that together or there'd be no judgment. And it's just something we would do. Thank you, SMA. And uh, Sergeant Major Payne and SMA, are, do you have any parting thoughts for our viewers? Uh, just thank you for being, thank you for having me. And uh, Sergeant Major, I mean, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, it's been, an, it's really an honor to have you uh, on this stage and some of the the great things that you've done for your country is truly appreciated. And a lot of that really correlates. And how, how can we get some of this secret sauce from uh, some of the units that have had those fit, disciplined, cohesive teams out to the rest of the organization? And for the whole Army, we can do this and we can make those cohesive teams better. And we've got great models. We just got to get that out and say we can do this. Thank you, SMA. And thank you, Sergeant Major Payne. And thanks to those watching online right now. If you have any questions for the SMA or ideas for future episodes, leave them in the comments section or use hashtag SMA Talks on Twitter and Instagram.